One of the other very interesting things to note about epidemiology, which is very seldom discussed, is the difference in epidemiology that we see between the East and the West when we are looking at meat and longevity, meat and uh, mortality from various chronic illnesses. What we do see in the East is that the men who eat the most red meat have the lowest rates of heart attacks, and the women who eat the most red meat have the lowest rates of breast cancer. And I'll show you the study that corroborates that assertion, meat intake and cause specific mortality, a pooled analysis of Asian prospective cohort studies. This is a very large one. This is uh, 112,310 men, 184,411 women followed from either 6.6 .6 to 15.6 years. And what they found was that uh, ecological data indicate an increase in meat intake in Asian countries. However, our pooled analysis did not provide evidence of a higher risk of mortality for total meat intake and provided evidence of an inverse association with red meat poultry, and fish and seafood. Red meat intake was inversely associated with cardiovascular disease mortality in men and with cancer mortality in women in Asian countries. What could possibly be going on there? Clearly the uh, answer or the hypothesis that explains that is that in Asians, red meat is good for them. And in white Caucasians, red meat is bad for us, right? No, that's silly. That doesn't make any sense at all. What's going on here is that there's a different narrative that in Asia, if you're eating red meat, you're of a higher socioeconomic status, you're doing more healthy behaviors, you're getting in the sun more. You do all the things that we saw in the UK shopper study associated with increased longevity, except in Asia, red meat has not been vilified, it's been celebrated. People who eat red meat are of a higher socioeconomic status. So it completely changes the equation and completely changes the way this epidemiology looks. And that's exactly why these studies are so darn misleading. To answer the DM that I got on Instagram, I said, hey, look, there are so many studies uh, that are epidemiology that have conflicting results on cancer. If you look from the East versus the West, this one clearly shows that red meat intake is associated with lowest rates of cancer in women. And what's going on there? Is red meat not bad for women and GI cancer? What, why is red meat associated with GI cancer in American, in Westernized humans in some cases? Well, it's possible that it's happening because of unhealthy user bias. To dig deeper into that question, just for a moment, I'll go into this aside, to dig deeper into that question of red meat and colon cancer, or cancer in general, you can look at the IARC report, the International Association, uh, I believe, of Cancer Research or Research on Cancer um, report from 2015. The full report was published in 2018. There's a gentleman named David Clearfield who's done quite an interesting expose on this, this uh, analysis. So the IARC, I believe, is a WHO committee that got together in 2015 in a secret location in France. They had over 400 studies to consider, and they threw all of the interventional studies out. They only included 14 studies in that assessment. This is the assessment that people go on when they say that red meat is a class 2 A or B carcinogen, whether you're thinking about non-processed or processed red meat. And they threw out all of the studies except for 14. Of the 14 studies, every single one was epidemiology. They threw out all the interventional studies. They threw out all the uh, animal studies that did not show any harm with red meat and animals, and even animal studies that showed that giving bacon to rats improved their GI cancers. They threw out all those studies in their consideration. They used 14 epidemiology studies in their final decision by the WHO IARC committee. This is the study that is being touted or is being parroted by people saying that red meat is associated with cancer. And of the 14, eight showed no association between red meat and cancer. I'll repeat that. Eight of the 14 studies showed no association between red meat and cancer. Six showed an association, but of the six, only one showed a significant association. Five out of six studies, the association was non-significant. And in the one single study that showed a significant association between red meat consumption and GI cancer, what we found was that the people who ate more red meat were also more obese and more insulin resistant. So again, this is unhealthy user bias at play in spades. Clearly, clearly illustrated that the people that were eating more red meat in this community were unhealthy in other ways. And so the red meat was correlating with other unhealthy behaviors, other chronic illness, and that can again be confounding. This is the problem with epidemiology studies. They are correlation, not causation and they must be interpreted. We can generate hypotheses, which must then be tested by interventions. And it's pretty difficult to test the hypothesis with an intervention saying, oh, red meat causes cancer. That's going to take a long time to test. We can't do the groups. We can't randomize. So then people are left trying to dream up mechanistic explanations by which compounds in red meat may be harmful to the gut, which really fall apart upon 
detailed examination. There really are no mechanisms by which red meat would harm the gut, not heme iron, not nitrosothiols. I've talked about this all in the past. I can talk about it again if you guys would like, but that is the subject for a future podcast. And this is again, an aside, a little bit of a mini digression on red meat and cancer.